Hello and welcome everybody. Um, this today's webinar is about the Easy to Connect, um, our latest instrument for um, sample purification. My name is Jan Schulz and I'm heading the global product management team for sample prep automation um, here at Kayagen. And um, with me today is uh, Jessica. Yes, hello everybody. So my name is Jessica Zare and I'm a scientific expert and working in the instrument robotics department at Kayagen and I was involved in the development of the EZ2. Thank you, Jessica. Today we will have a look at uh, the automation market. Um, we will look um, why it is required, uh, what are the current uh, challenges in research and how can automation provide a solution. Um, and then we will look into the EV1 and the EV2, the history of the EV1 family and what additional benefits the EV2 can bring to address the challenges. Scientific progress changed the requirements um, on laboratories. Um, we see with our customers um, that they need to isolate nucleic acids from more and more challenging sample materials like soil, hard to lyse microbes, um, or sometimes they even have only traces, um, or they are facing various amounts of, of nucleic acid in their sample material. And at the same time, they need to subject um, these nucleic acids to um, very diverse downstream applications like PCR, qPCR, and um, more and more NGS and also digital PCR, bringing new um, challenges and new requirements um, to the nucleic acids. So the, these are different difficulties that we see um, in research. Um, because of these challenging sample materials, we are facing a huge experimental variation um, and, and increased uh, challenges um, with the sample types, um, which which have impact on the on the sensitivity uh, also of the downstream application. Um, our customers are facing um, sometimes a huge number. Um, of samples that need to be processed. Um, at the same time, we have very expensive downstream applications uh, like NGS, um, and this reduces the budget also uh, for each individual experiment. Um, we have um, a demand for traceability, which means um, that customers are working in a regulated uh, surrounding and therefore need to document um, all the steps that they are doing. Um, we have many centralized laboratories, which means that you need to coordinate the work um, on, on instruments, often multiple groups, or, or, or many groups are working with single instruments and even in one lab, um, multiple users are working on one instrument. And um, we have in single labs, multiple workflows um, that are conducted. And how can we address this um, with automation? Um, the high variability um, that um, operators see um, can be addressed by taking away the manual steps. So we want to have a high degree um, of automation, uh, which then automatically leads um, in a low variation of the, of the results. And then we want, um, as said, to minimize the hands-on procedure, not only to limit um, the variability, um, but also um, to allow um, to process large number of samples. Um, we want to make the lab more efficient um, and thereby we want to reduce the cost per prep. And also if you um, reduce the variability of the experiment, it takes less experiments to get to a significant result. Um, we can um, support the traceability um, of experiments. We have um, with automation um, the option to uh, track operations and to track um, who conducted the experiment, the lot number um, of kits, and so on and so on. And uh, in the end, of course, it's also about flexibility. Um, one instrument needs to be um, able uh, to conduct various uh, workflows. With the EV1, we have been very successful in the market and uh, we placed thousands of instruments since its launch in 2003 and customers really appreciated um, the instruments because it is a very reliable and a robust instrument and um, um, it's also a very fast instrument um, we have customers that use it, use it as a high throughput instrument 
putting multiple instruments next to each other to perform one sample after the other. Um, the kit performance is very reliable and customers appreciate the technology of the instrument. It's, it's a very robust technology and this is shown here. So what the instrument is doing um, is that it um, uh, works with tips inside so it really can aspirate liquid and with the liquid also the magnetic beads and then um, a magnet uh, can be put in close proximity to this tip to attract um, the beads uh, and the liquid can be exchanged and also transferred then to the next well and so on and so on and um, this is very unusual for an instrument in this size normally benchtop instruments um, work with static magnets and um, only transferring the the liquid but keeping uh, the particles um, in one well and here we can transfer we even can add liquid um, in in one well uh, which allows for um, a higher degree or a maximal degree i would even say um, of automation so um, with the easy one as said we have been very successful and, and customers appreciate um, the the system and the performance and the process safety um, but of course we um, we want also to deliver new solutions and to um, to adapt also to the newer requirements of the market that I already introduced you to and um, so we talk to to the customers and to the different customer groups that we already have um, uh, with the EV1 and um, ask them about their requirements. And um, uh, what they told us is that they need a higher throughput um, and also um, an adaption of the kit portfolio. So we need newer kits, we need kits uh, that are designed to cope uh, with sample types uh, that are currently um, um, required and, and are often processed. Um, also, we have customers that want to work with larger volumes. Um, and uh, being able to um, to use them also with a benchtop instrument. Um, we want to expand the scope of automation, so we want to have a higher degree of automation. Um, custom, as said, we want to reduce um, the manual steps in the workflow, and we want to keep the instruments very simple. This is, of course, true for the maintenance, um, but also for the usability. So what we came up with is, uh, with an approach where we don't, uh, where we will not launch a single instrument because for our different customer groups, um, this would not be enough and would not be tailored um, for the customer groups, but we will have three different instruments. This is the easy to connect for our customers in life science research. This is a kind of basic um, uh, variant, I would say. And then we have um, two instrument variants that are tailored um, for customers working in forensics. This is the easy to connect FX for forensics and the easy to connect MDX for customers working in medical diagnostics. And they come with some special features, but we, today we will focus on the easy to connect for customers in uh, life science research. And with that, I hand over to Jessica. Yes, so now it's my turn to proudly present to you the easy to connect. So as the Heather already um, summarizes and summarizes it very well, is that simplicity, safety, and speed, this is what the easy to connect is all about. So let me tell you a bit more about its features. So we already started with a white kit portfolio from the easy one, and we transferred this portfolio, of course, to the easy two. But development of the easy two allowed us to increase the rate of sample input materials even more. And Jan will um, present you in a bit already some new kits that we have in development. The EV2 guarantees maximal process safety because our reagent cartridges, they are pre-filled and sealed under sterile conditions. And this means that they also stay sealed until you have prepared your run, you have uh, loaded everything to the instrument and then just press the start button. We have an onboard piercing mechanism that will then will do the complete job for you. So there's no manual interference necessary. Another great thing about the easy to connect is that we were able to minimize hands on time even more. So we have several modules on board that are needed for efficient nuclear, nucleic acid purification. For example, like I already mentioned before, the piercing bar, we also have an onboard pipetting system, a movable magnet, 
that can collect the beads during the purification. And we have also a heating and cooling system. So with this, we, can, we were able to minimize the pretreatment requirements and maximize the level of automation. And please keep in mind that this is still a benchtop instrument. So the EZ2 has also flexible input. We scaled up a bit, so you can now process up to 24 samples in parallel. Maybe one of the most striking improvements is the huge touch display. So with the EZ2, we now have a graphic user interface Phase, which will guide you through the run setup and also through the maintenance procedures. So we do not need to use those protocol cards anymore. We know from the EV1 because the instrument now comes with pre-installed protocols, which means that as soon as the instrument arrives at your lab, you can just unpack it, put it on a bench, plug it in, and it is ready to go. We also have a clear hood, which is also a very nice feature because you can follow the process step by step. And this is also very great for training purposes. Additionally, we have a LED stripe at the top of the instrument, and this enhances the visibility of the work table. And we can also use this for um, yeah, visualization of the instrument status. This means if a run is finished, we have a very slow blinking. And if we have an error on the instrument, we have a bit faster blinking. And this means that even from far away, you can also see what the instrument status is all about. Um, and you might already have noticed that we have equipped the EZ2 also with a connectivity feature, which might be suggested already by the name EZ2 Connect. Um, this means that we can connect the instrument to the Kaya Sphere base. So the Internet of Things is a huge topic at the moment. And I guess nowadays it's really hard to buy even a washing machine without this feature. So um, I will get back to this feature later and I will show you all the benefits that we have with our connectivity feature. So let's summarize how the EZ2 can improve your daily lab routine. So there are only three simple, uh, simple steps needed from your sample to high quality nucleate assets. So you just have to load the sample and the cartridge into the instrument then you can run a pre, um, pre programmed protocol. And if you need or if you want to use this, we also have a guided run setup here. Then you just have to start and press the start button, and then you can watch the instrument do its job. So this might be really relaxing, but if you don't have the time to do that, you can also just leave. So with our connectivity feature, you will be able to um, have a look at the run progress and also the status of the instrument from your uh, mobile device. And you can choose if you would like to have notifications, which means that you just can do whatever you are up to and get a push notification as soon as the instrument is done. So to increase flexibility even more, we also have extended our tip rack portfolio. So the basic instrument will come with a basic tip rack and this can be used for screw cap tubes and also for tip holders with tip. So you can put uh, the tubes and tip holders at each, at, yeah, at each position and the protocol will guide you what to put at which position. If you would like to use um, clip cap tubes with this rack, we also have the special rack now, it's the clip cap tip rack. Um, and here you can see this is a picture in the middle. So you can put tubes with tip holders in the middle row and we also have special slots for the flip cap tubes in the front and in also in the back row. Additionally, we have the newest member to our rack family, which is the large volume tip rack. And you can see that this one has enlarged positions in the middle, so these can hold large volume tubes. And these large volume tubes will um, hold up to 8 mil pot tubes, which is really great. And for example, this one is really amazing if you want to um, purify really low abundance DNA and RNA. And Jan will already show you later that we also have application for this one in place. Okay, thank you. Um, now we are coming to the to the kits. And as I said, we already have an extensive portfolio of kits for the EV1. Uh, this is shown on the, on the left side, uh, where we um, have uh, kits um, to process um, different volumes of blood, 
Uh, we have um, tissue kits for DNA, RNA, and also virus kits, and, and also um, some um, CCF DNA kits. But we will come up with a new kit portfolio already launched uh, now in, in April and in May. And these are what called EZ1 and 2 kits. And as the name indicates, these will be compatible with the EZ1 and also with the EZ2. Um, these are the EZ1 and 2 DNA FFPE kit and the EZ1 and 2 DNA FFPE UNG kit. Uh, and we will talk about these um, in the next slides. And then there will also be the EZ1 and 2 CCF DNA kit, uh, which we also um, look at um, in, in today's webinar, and Jessica already told us about um, the new um, tip racks uh, that are used for this. And we will also come up uh, with additional kits um, launching in October, um, which are called Easy Two kits. Um, and this also already indicates that they are used only on the Easy Two, um, and these include um, kits for isolating mRNA from circulating tumor cells. Uh, we will have uh, a kit for microRNA isolation, um, and we will also um, complete our FFPE product portfolio with a kit for RNA isolation and a kit for simultaneous DNA and RNA isolation from FFPE. And as I said, um, we now will continue with the EZ1 and 2 DNA FFPE kit um, and with the challenges um, when processing FFPE. And for, for those of you who already did that, they uh, are familiar with that, um, there are multiple challenges uh, when um, dealing with FFPE samples. On one hand, we have um, various storage times. Um, so that means that, that some um, of some labs are facing FFPE samples that have been um, in, in the basement for about 10 years, 20 years or whatever. Um, some are using very fresh um, FFPE uh, materials. And um, this is a challenge um, when you develop a kit to develop a solution uh, that can cope with all of these. And then we have um, the fixation um, procedure itself. Uh, we are facing different fixation times. There are different protocols to do the fixation. Some um, labs do this only for a few minutes. Um, and some um, have the uh, samples um, uh, put in formalin um, for for hours, days, and even months or years. Um, and uh, this goes along with uh, cross-linking. Um, the fixation, the aim of the fixation itself is to cross-link proteins uh, within uh, the tissue, but it also um, cross-links the DNA to the proteins. And, and vice versa. And um, this, of course, is good when you want to fix the tissue, but it becomes difficult when you want to extract DNA from a tissue. And if you do so, you will also face the fragmentation of the DNA. Um, so the whole um, fixation and dehydration procedure puts um, a lot of stress on the DNA and it will become fragmented. And then there are some artifacts as well. Um, when you uh, fix um, a tissue in formalin, um, you will generate artifacts within, um, within the DNA. Um, and we will come to this now with the next slides. So what happens um, to a sample and to the DNA within the sample uh, when you fix it in, in formalin is depicted here. Um, cytosine um, normally um, binds to guanine. And um, here it is shown uh, that uh, the fixation uh, deaminates the cytosine and it becomes a uracil. And this uracil then um, doesn't uh, bind uh, to uh, guanine anymore, uh, but to adenine. And what does that mean um, for the sequencing of the sample? This is depicted here. On the left um, hand, you see um, the the original uh, DNA before fixation, and then with fixation, the cytosine becomes deaminated into uracil, um, here depicted in red. And if you now do the PCR amplification during NGS library prep, um, this uracil will then bind um, to adenine, uh, which would normally not be there because um, the, the cytosine that was originally there would bind to guanine. And then the adenine in the next step uh, would bind to thymidine. So when we look and compare the first, the original sequence, 
uh, with the region uh, with the sequence that is then sequenced in the end, you see that there's a transition um, from cytosine to thymine and from guanine uh, to adenine, uh, which is which is wrong then. And um, we can help and, and we, we do this with a new kit um, to remove this artifact. Um, we have the option to do a UNG treatment, which stands for uracil and glycosylase, and this removes the uracil in the first step and thereby prevents um, the wrong um, analysis here. The other challenge uh, when working with FFPE samples, and uh, if you want to isolate DNA from these, is that it is a very long procedure, and automation is not uh, not that easy. And normally, um, um, instruments um, are used to um, automate only um, the last steps of this whole procedure, so the bind, wash, elute steps. But now with the Easy Two, um, we have um, we have the option to automate the full process, which means um, after deparaffinization, um, we have a lysis step with, uh, and the cross-linking step, which is very, um, uh, very important to remove the uh, fixation caused cross-links. And then we can do the UNG step, so this optional artifact removal step, which can also be automated. Um, then we have an RNA removal step, and the second lysis step, which um, which um, optimizes um, the performance and and increases um, the yield, and everything, all of these steps can be automated then on the Easy to Connect. We also offer um, an, another protocol, uh, which also which only um, automates the bind wash elution step. This can also be done on the on the Easy One. Um, but full automation is also possible then on the EV2. Um, we did this um, and subjected uh, FFPE samples from various um, human organs um, to the procedure, so isolating it with the EV1 into DNA FFPE kit and also with a um, semi automated competitor kit. And afterwards, we measured the amount of double stranded DNA within the uh, within the alloys, and what is quite obvious, and um, for those of you who worked already with FFPE samples and especially with uh, samples from different organs, is um, that we see a huge variation with respect um, to the amount of DNA um, uh, that you can isolate from these samples. But um, this is uh, this is normal, um, and and this is um, uh, what you normally see when you um, when you do this with different organs. But what is also obvious is that we have always a high content of double-stranded DNA when we isolate with the easy one and two DNA FFPE kit. And we also subjected um, this DNA to downstream qPCR analysis. And uh, remember that this is um, the polymerase chain reaction. This means that the DNA is doubled in every cycle of this reaction, and um, it counts um, the cycle uh, when the amount of DNA has reached a certain threshold. Uh, that means that the lower the C CQ value here, um, the better, and it indicates more DNA is, is in the sample. And also here we see that we have high amounts of amplifiable DNA uh, when we isolate um, this different tissues um, with the easy one into DNA FFPE kit. Um, and um, uh, we, I already introduced you to the to the UNG step, and uh, this is shown here. Uh, actually, we isolated DNA from a colon cancer sample with a known sequence, and then we compared um, the sequencing result um, to the original sequence. Um, and we did this uh, the isolation uh, one time with the with a UNG treatment and also without UNG treatment. And what you see here is a comparison of ACG or T um, um, uh, of the amount of these uh, bases um, compared to the C in the reference sample. And when we do this without uh, UNG treatment um, indicated by the blue bars, you see that there's an increase of timing, so of T's uh, within the reads, uh, clearly indicating an artifact um, um, with a deamination 
um, and the appearance of, of uracil. When we do this with UNG digestion upfront, um, indicated by the red bars, the number of T's um, correlated to C's in the reference um, becomes then uh, normal. And the same is true um, when we do this uh, for adenine uh, compared uh, to G in the reference, um, where we see an increase of A's um, when we do not do the UNG digestion in blue on the right side, um, but we, when we do this, um, indicated by the red bars, um, it becomes again normal and goes to a normal level, um, clearly showing um, the performance of the UNG treatment. Um, so uh, in total, we can say that uh, we here can offer a solution um, with the easy one into DNA FFPE kit, uh, where you can isolate uh, DNA from challenging FFPE samples with a minimum time uh, and a maximum degree of automation with high performance and even offer um, an additional UNG treatment to get rid of, um, of uh, fixation aspect, making it an optimal solution for FFPE processing in an automated way. Another very challenging sample material um, is liquid biopsy. And um, the, um, the standard uh, key analyte uh, when it comes to liquid biopsy um, is cell-free DNA, but this also comes along uh, with certain challenges. So the amount of cell-free DNA uh, within a plasma sample is, is very, very low and also very variable. Um, it can range from 1 to 50 nanograms per milliliter of, of blood sample. And in addition, um, this is also um, masked by other DNAs um, in the sample. Um, during transportation and also during storage, um, samples or, or cells within the sample can release um, their own DNA into the plasma, and this will mask um, the DNA that is there. And also, we have um, cell-free DNA from the host, uh, which can be um, then the yeah um, the, the normal, the healthy cells, so to say, when we are searching for cell-free DNA from tumors. Or it can also be um, the mother, for example, when we are searching for cell-free DNA uh, from the fetus. Um, and this makes uh, the processing and uh, yeah, the isolation very difficult because we need a very, very sensitive method um, to isolate the cell-free DNA. And with to achieve maximal sensitivity, we needed to find a way to process large volumes um, of, um, of sample on a benchtop instrument, uh, which is uh, very uncommon and very challenging. And here we use the uh, new tip racks that Jessica introduced to you. And this allows us to process up to eight milliliters um, of uh, sample to isolate cell-free DNA, making it a very, very sensitive um, isolation. Um, and um, also a very efficient isolation. Um, we have run times um, on average of 45 minutes, whereas um, this is calculated as an average for eight milliliters, the instrument would only need 76 minutes in total for 24 samples. Um, when you process less, um, for example, two milliliters, uh, the instrument is faster than it takes only 35 minutes for 24 samples. This slide shows an experiment uh, that we did in our research and development department. Here we used the EZ1 and 2 CCS DNA kit and a competitor kit to isolate cell-free DNA from 4 milliliter EDTA plasma. Um, and what is quite obvious is um, that we reach a higher yield um, with the um, EZ1 and 2 cell-free DNA kit um, compared to the competitor um, for both samples, showing that it is um, that the high performance of the kit and um, indicating the maximal sensitivity that you can reach in downstream applications. So, um, so far from the new kits, and now I will hand over to Jessica again um, to talk more about the easy to connect instrument. So now it's time to keep my promise and tell you a bit more about our connectivity feature. 
So with the Kaya, uh, oh, wrong instrument. <laughs> again, please. No problem. Just give it a few seconds. You can start again. So now it's time to keep my promise and tell you a bit more about our connectivity feature. So with the Easy2 Connect, you have the option to connect your instrument to the Kaya 3 Cloud, or you can use the functionalities in local mode. Access to the Kaya 3 app is also really flexible. You can use a desktop app on your PC, but we also have mobile versions um, for Android and also iOS devices available. And one example of these mobile view um, you can see here in the picture. In the app, we have a bunch of functionalities available. You can see all instruments that you have connected to the Kaya Sphere base in an overview. You can keep track of your instruments and also the status of every, each and every instrument via real-time tracking and with a status monitor. You can, of course, also get push notifications, which I already mentioned before, and these are customizable. So you can select what you would like to be notified on. We also have a maintenance viewer in place, and you can download run reports via app. We also notify you about upcoming updates, and you can update them remotely with one click, so this is really easy and convenient. We also have an instrument scheduler and a usage monitor in place. And with this, you can manage your instrument and also work to from anywhere at any time. And everything can be done really effortless, without even having to be in the lab. And speaking about effortlessness, this also applies to our maintenance procedure. So here in the um, picture, you can see the UV decontamination. So you can see that we have, an, we have a high emission UV lamp in place. You can see here's a little reflector and the status LED4, which is a safety feature for the UV LED lamp. And in addition to the usual quick cleanup procedure, we can do a decontamination of the work deck using this UV LED. And this is also automated, so you just have to go to the maintenance section of your user interface and select some cycles you would like to run and then start the procedure. So with this, we are already on our last slide, and I hope that you share our excitement for the easy to connect so let me briefly summarize what we have learned today. The easy to connect raises the bar for workflow automation. So we have on-deck piercing, we have on-deck pipetting, we have a heating module, and also a cooling functionality and the magnet bar in place. So this really allows you to minimize pre-treatment steps and maximize automation. For bigger process safety, we have preferred cartridges and this will increase the, um, also the possibility of the nucleic acid purification. And last but not least, like I already introduced to you a few slides ago, we have the connectivity feature. So this will enable you to monitor and manage your instrument from anywhere, anytime, with any desktop or mobile device. So thank you for your attention. Um, and don't hesitate to contact us if you um, want to have more information about the Easy to Connect or you want to see it live in your lab um, or to get more information material. Thanks a lot for your attention. And now it's time for questions. Please um, don't hesitate um, to come up with ideas, questions, or just feedback.